Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo again today. We're going to talk about a topic that we cover a lot when we're doing medical consultations. Okay, when somebody comes into the zoo and medical center here, uh, the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center, when they come in and we start talking to them about different feeders, things to feed, feed things not to feed, so on and so forth, what we start discussing is a lot of science. Now, when we're talking UVB and calcium powder, uh, or one or the other, now we've discussed this in previous episodes, all right? But here's kind of the thing. There's science behind why certain reptiles would need less UVB uh, exposure because of what they eat. Now, when we start talking about animals like monitors and tegus and snakes, especially all, almost all of your snakes, uh, all of your meat-eating snakes, not your bug eaters, not your, uh, not your spider eaters, uh, and, uh, and even your other snake eaters. Uh, but when we talk about the numerous amounts of snakes that eat a meat product, whether mice, whether rats, whether rabbits, hamsters, gerbils, guinea pigs, pigs, Goat, baby goats, whatever, okay? Whatever that may be. <coughs> Excuse me. We talk about the, the need, and yes, again, we have discussed, go ahead if you want and give your animal UVB, but let's, let's dive into this, okay? Let's dive into the insect feeders versus the meat eaters. Okay, first, now, I've got here, let's start with the insect feeders. All right, I've got... See that right there is a dubia roach, okay? Now, we've got this dubia roach. The dubia roach, just like your superworms, your crickets, your millworms, all of those guys, they have a hard exoskeleton shell, okay? We know this, all right? The reason they have this, that's their armor protecting. It protects the meat underneath the armor. It protects their bodies. And what happens is, for one thing, for one thing, they animals do not process those exoskeletons as easily um, or essentially at all like they do the meaty center. All right, so you have to be careful about in the amount and how often you're doing the insect feeders because if they're not warm enough or if they're not having bowel movements often enough, then those animals will get impacted or constipated due to an overabundance of exoskeletons, okay? They won't process those. It's like taking, hand me that water bottle right there, Bailey. It's like taking this water bottle right here, okay? It's like taking this water bottle and putting a hot dog in it. You could swallow this bottle with a hot dog in it, your body's gonna process the hot dog, but it's not gonna process the bottle. It's not gonna process the plastic. Same thing with like cor uh, kernels of corn, uh, corn on the cob, uh, and the same thing applies for your hard exoskeleton um, insect feeders. Yes, they process down the meaty center, but they do not process the shells, okay? Now, let's understand. Now, this is exactly why you have to give the calcium with the UVB exposure, or at least one or the other, okay? Um, when it comes to animals such as your water dragons, your bearded dragons, your gecko species, anything that almost strictly eats an insectivorous diet, okay? because there's no calcium, there's no vitamins in those insect feeders, unless of course they're gut loaded, whatever the case may be. That's, that's a little bit different, but just a natural, you take it in, there's no real calcium or vitamin exposure. All right, now let's talk about meat eaters, all right? Now I have a thawed out rat, it's a frozen thawed rat, okay, that we would feed to one of our crocodilian, one of our medium-sized snakes, whatever the case may be. It's just an average large rat, okay? So we have this large rat right here. All right, now, so with this rat or any mammal feeder, okay, there is an skeletal system just like we have, okay? So there is a bone structure inside of this feeder. There's a bone structure inside of rabbits, inside of the goats, the pigs, the mice, the hamsters, the gerbils, the African saw furs, whatever, okay? When we talk about the differences between skeletal and exoskeleton, the skeletal system animals, you have to remember, the bone structures are actually calcium. 
So when the animals process the feeders, the rats, the, the, the hamsters, the gerbils, the pigs, whatever, they are getting calcium from the feeder, okay? So not necessarily needing UVB. And I want you to understand something else. This is, this is something that uh, the, these mainstream, and if you've watched enough of our videos, you know it, I'm going to say exactly what I got to say about vets, about Facebook forums, about Google. It doesn't matter. All of these hardcore nut jobs that are just hardcore one or the other, it, 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 that's stupidity, okay? Science is what it is. In the rainforest, a lot of your insect feeders don't see a lot of sun at all, especially if they're a terrestrial species. So where in the heck are they getting their UVB from? Very little of it. Most of your carnivorous um, animals, when they're sitting out in the sun, they're not so much trying to get UV exposure. What they're trying to get is heat. They're trying to warm up. Heat helps with having an appetite. We all know this. Heat helps with digestion. We all know that. Heat helps with processing food. Um, and also, it helps them to, to warm their bodies up so they can actually move throughout the day. The colder the animal, the more sluggish. The warmer the animal, the better it is that they move. This is just basic cold-blooded animal science. Everybody knows this. Um, but you have to understand, a lot of your amphibian species never see sunlight. Hardly ever. They're always hiding under something um, or they go away from the sunlight. You know, so again, when we start trying to talk about true realistic science when it comes down to UVB versus non-UVB, calcium versus UVB, UVB versus calcium, uh, not doing either one, I'm not a proponent of not doing either one. If you want to give UVB and calcium to everything that you have, that's fine. But some animals, it's just not necessary. Some of these reptiles, snakes is one, it's just not necessary. Um, because you have to remember, they don't need so much calcium because they're getting the calcium from this right here. They're getting the vitamins from this right here. Uh, the vitamins and minerals and calciums and things that they need. If you want to add that in, then that's fine. If you want to add calcium powder in, then you know, help yourself. If you want to add the UVB to your tegus and monitors and things like that, go ahead. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The main thing that we are trying to teach is the difference in why one really needs it more than the other has to have it um, because of what they eat. Okay. So understand this. Let's go back over it one more time. Your exoskeleton insect feeders, no calcium, no bone structure, no nothing like that. Your those guys, those guys have nothing. So yes, you do want to, obviously, you want to give them um, some calcium powder with the vitamin D3. You want to give them UVB exposure if you, you know, if you so choose. You can give them natural sunlight during the summertime, outdoor runs, pens, whatever it is that you do, um, however it is that you choose to do it. I want you to also understand something. Three hours a week of natural sunlight would actually take the place of a store-bought UVB bulb seven days a week, 12 hours a day, okay? So this man-made stuff is nowhere near as good. Now we've talked about the mercury vapor bulbs. Mercury vapor bulbs are much better than your store-bought tubed uh, and uh, what we call the curly Q um, uh, UVB bulbs. Uh, now, the flip side to that is again, remember when we have mammals, when we have actual feeder uh, feeder animals, to include uh, fowl, uh, chickens, uh, turkeys, things like that for the folks like us that have the larger snakes, the larger crocodilians. Again, you have to remember, bone structure, skeletal system is actually calcium, okay? So hence, not so much a need to give the calcium with the VD3 unless you just want to, because you remember, by going back to the episode on MBD, too much calcium can be just as bad as not enough, okay? So you can overdo things. Um, and the UVB exposure, it's totally up to you on your skeletal system animals if you give the UV exposure or if you don't. Do I still recommend? Yes, do a little bit of extra because it's not gonna hurt it, but you also have to remember, UV kills things. We know this from humans. So the more UV exposure something has, the faster it's going to die over time. So again, there is science behind everything that happens. When we are trying to take care of these animals, it's about just trying to give the best care possible with the least amount of complications and headache involved into it, okay? So, exoskeleton versus skeletal system reptile feeders. 
This is Chad. We're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We are the Reptile Rangers. Make sure to write us in. Hit that subscribe button right down there. Hit the subscribe button. People are writing us asking about uh, filming topics all the time. The zoo, medical, housing, their animals, what to feed, what kind of animals do we have here, whatever. Uh, whatever it is that you want to know about when it comes to the zoo, medical center, and the rangers here, uh, you feel free and write us in anytime. Now, we'll either see you on the next episode or we'll see you at the zoo. Later.